This is going to be a little bit long video, but it's worth it. The extended body on this is like the coolest one that I've ever done. And when you tie a fly and call it the Steak Drake, you know it's got to be cool. Okay, this is a fly that I used to tie quite a bit back in the day, but I used pre-made extended bodies. Um, and we've actually had these extended body tools in the shop for quite a while. And it took me a while to kind of grab them off the shelf, take them home and play with them. But once I did, I was amazed at how cool the, the bodies are that you can make with these. So it's the CNF extended body tool. It comes with three of these pins and it comes with this uh, glue bottle that you use to, to kind of tie everything together. I'll show you how to use that. But anyway, I was looking at this and I'm thinking that's really not anything special, but the fact that your vise has a spot to, to really clamp down on this is good because you don't have to put the bare needle in your vise jaws and if, if you tweak it, it can damage your jaws. But the most important part of this, uh, this extended body tool is right here on the tip. The metal is a little bit textured and that's where you tie in your thread to, to start out the fly. So that to me was a game changer because uh, it could be frustrating to have your thread slip off the edge of that when you're trying to tie a fly that, that takes a lot of time and patience. So anyway, without explaining too much more, we'll just get right into tying this uh, extended body. So first things first, I'm just going to take some chartreuse thread uh, because it is a green drake, we want a little bit of brightness to show through. And in the package for these uh, these tools, there are instructions and also these foam pieces. Now, I almost threw these away until I realized that they're little punched out extended body pieces. This is the thickest of the pieces, um, perfect for a big meaty green drake. But I'm basically going to take one of these uh, foam pieces <laughs> and... Uh, I pulled the thread off. Gosh dang it. All right, maybe uh, five turns of thread will keep it on there. Pro mistake. All right, so still on there nice and firm. I'm going to take the foam and I'm going to just barely catch it in. So it's barely tied in here. And then I'll just take the foam and kind of hold it over the, the needle the way that I'm going to create a taper in this is I'm just going to um, vary the, the distance between my spiraling wraps and the tension as well. If I crank down the whole way, um, all the way up the body, it's not going to have much of a taper. So I need to let off the tension as I go up the body. It's actually a lot more simple than you think. So I'm going to create smaller turns with tighter tension. And then I'm going to open up the, the distance between my turns and let off the tension a little bit. So what you're basically making is a, a little unicorn horn, just like that. So it'll, it'll wrap all the way around to the other side of the hook. And I'll just throw in a quick hand whip finish. Um, this will all be glued, so you don't need to worry about uh, that not coming undone. So from here, I'll, I'll take my, my foam and I'll kind of work it around the bottom side of the hook, make sure it's nice and covered up. Then I'll take a little Sharpie. This is a chartreuse or neon green Sharpie. And I'm just gonna color that because that will show through a little bit on the finished fly. Now to get the dubbing over the top of this, I'm going to take just some super fine dub. And this is the part that I was kind of confused at. Um, but once I did it, I it kind of really opened my eyes. I ended up staying up kind of late that night just playing with all the things you could do. So, I'm just going to take some super fine dubbing and it's quite a bit as you can see and I just have it kind of spread out and I'm very carefully going to attach it and do one turn of the dubbing and then I'll just use my rotary vise to turn this and cover that body with dubbing. So it takes a little bit going back and forth with this but that's essentially what you want to do and you're as you turn it you want to kind of tease the dubbing down so you don't build it up too much in one spot of the fly um, 
but I'm not going to sit here and just talk the whole time because it takes a little bit to do this, so here we go. Okay, so once I have a fairly even layer of dubbing on this body, I'll just take my fingers and I'll rotate it and really try to drive it into those uh, segments. But as you can see, you can still see the bumps through the, through the dubbing a little bit. And now we're going to tie in our tails. So I'm going to reattach my thread right here at the very end of the fly. And I'll just take some black fibers like uh, mayfly tails or micro fibbits, whatever you want to call them. And I will tie some of those in at the back. Now, drake tails aren't super, super long, so I'll just tie those in about like this. And if I tie those in tight and then give them a little bit of a, a thumbnail flare, they'll kind of spread out like that. So once those are tied in, I'm just going to go up the fly following the same path of those bumps that I created with the thread. And then up here I'll, I'll tie it off. So as you can see we have a pretty killer looking mayfly body. It's all foam underneath. Uh, the dubbing's on obviously on the outside but it's, uh, it's going to float super super well and, and give a, a really realistic profile. Now to keep this all together the next part is take this glue and you just soak the whole body with glue. Alright, now I get it. That does not look very good right there. Um, so we're going to take this off the pin now, and this glue is not going to stick to your fingers hardly at all. It just kind of soaks into the body and uh, just doesn't really even solidify it. It's still pretty flexible once it dries. But the way to get this off the, the pin uh, that I've found works best is while it's wet, I'm just going to kind of pinch it on the sides and just force it right off of there. So. we have the body like this and I can bend it and create a little curvature in the tail like that and there's going to be this little nub underneath the tails of thread where I where I tied it in and once it dries I can just trim that off but as you can see as it dries um, the glue doesn't really even show up at all so anyway we'll let this dry for a little bit and then we'll throw it on a hook all right, we are ready to tie this body on the hook. I have kind of a curved shanked hook. This is a fulling mill check nymph hook. Um, I encourage you strongly to not look at the names of the hooks, but look at the overall shape and uh, just use them whatever you, for whatever you want. Uh, this is going to be a green drake dry fly, about the furthest thing you can get from a check nymph. Anyway, we're going to use the same thread, and I'll start by just dressing my hook with some of the thread. This will help that fly stick in place a little bit better. If I just put it on bare hook shank it will want to spin around. So once I've got it here I'll take my my finished fly body and I'll kind of look at where I want that hook to poke out of here. So if you look at this right about here at this segment I, I'm going to thread my hook through here and I'm going to make it poke out right here and that looks like it will sit nicely on this hook. So I'll take the hook out of the vise and thread it through just like a good old plastic worm. So once I have it threaded I'll put it back in the vise and finish placing the fly or fi finish placing the body. Okay, I still have a little bit of time to mold that body, but it's going to sit just about like that. And I'll just take my thread now and just 
hammer down on that head. I'll trim it off, but I'm going to leave a little bit of the foam and fibbits hanging out. Just like that, just to give me more stuff to tie in to really secure this body. Now, caution when you're using super glue with this color Sharpie. Um, or else I would be using super glue right now. But if you look at the, uh, we did a test. If you color the, the green with super glue, it turns it red. So I've avoided using super glue on this one. Usually I would at this point on a foam fly. All right, so to add extra super buoyancy, I'm just going to take two or, or three CDC feathers, actually three of them. And uh, this is the Swiss Ultra Select XL. If that's not a pro name, I don't know what it is. But just get your favorite dun colored CDC. The only reason I got the Ultra Select is because they look like that. They're just phenomenal. I'm going to come in here. I have three of them lined up. And I'm going to trim the stems out of them. So I have a V notch cut in that. And I'll tie that in right about where I cut it. Just like that. And then I'll trim it off. Tighten that down a little bit more. And then I still have hold of these three feathers. And I'm going to trim the stems out again. And I've, I've got another nice V notch. And I'll tie in another clump of CDC right in front of the, the second one. So that's maximum CDC as the wing on this. Keep in mind it is a mayfly, so it's got a kind of a back facing wing and as you can see I have a pretty big step off here so I've got my wing I've got a bunch of bulk and then it just goes down to pretty much bare hook and I did that on purpose because we're going to tie a bullet head on this before I do that though I'm going to angle my hook upward a little bit and I'm going to cover up my thread wraps with dubbing And I'll try to match the, the width of the body on this dub. It's not going to matter too much because we're going to have some deer hair going over it. So we'll be just like that. And now this is 12 aught thread that I've been using. It's just it's too thin to do, the, to do this next part. So I'm going to switch over to just a similar color. This one is pale olive. This is actually ADOT. Semperfly waxed, but you could use like nano silk on this or, or whatever. But you do need a, a little bit stronger thread. So we're going to build a, a bullet head onto this fly. And so I'm just using like some olive color deer hair. This happens to be a primo strip. There's really no right or wrong deer or elk hair you can use on that. If you got a nice chunk of olive something, just use it. So I've got a chunk about, I don't know, that big. It's a fairly big chunk of hair for a fly this size. And I mostly got that because as soon as I start brushing this out, you're going to see that I'm pulling a lot of the under fur out of here. And it's going to slim down the, the actual amount of hair that I got out of there. So I'll brush that out. And then I'll just even the tips. I'll try to reduce the tool noise. See if I can stack this on a piece of foam. Alright. So we've got the tips aligned. I'm going to pull those out in the same direction I want them to face. So I've got a pretty good chunk of deer hair right here. Maybe a little bit too much. So I'm going to take some of that out of there. If you have too much and you're creating a bullet head, it can kind of be a pain. So that's a good amount. Um, 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna gauge this this deer hair. I'm gonna tie it in about the same length as the the body of the fly because I'm gonna fold it over itself and then it will kind of sit where this uh, the CDC is. So I'll just take that take that amount and I'm gonna tie it in right behind the hook eye with a few loose wraps gradually get tighter gradually get tighter until I'm pretty tight now notice I did not let go of the butts it's because I'll come in here now with my scissors and trim those butts it's harder to do that if you let go of those so now from here I'll kind of hang on to those still and then take my thread through those butts and really cinch down on those Squatch, we're filming right now. My dog's being a savage. Okay, now you can see that I, I built this too far forward. Not a big deal because I can just take that head and pack it backward. And that will expose that eye a little bit more. So we're good. Plenty of line tie in here. And... There are all kinds of tools you can use for bullet heads, but I find that just my normal old fingers work well. So I'm going to take my thread and advance it back to where I want that bullet head to end. Then I'll just push that back. I'll create the bullet head. I'm all fingers right now. But if I just wrap my thread around it and then cinch it down a little bit each turn, you have a nice little bulbous head on that drake. So there's a little bullet head. Now I want that really nice extended body that I created. I want that to show through. So I'm going to come under here and I'm going to trim out those fibers where the body is. And it's going to help also help the fly sit a little bit more flush. All right, so there's our drake so far. Drake do have very pronounced legs, so we're gonna use some of these uh, Grizzly Micro legs in olive for this one. And I'm just gonna take a long piece. And I'll tie one leg on one side, loop it over, and do a leg on the other side. Now you can take that now and adjust it however you want. But about like that's good. Now on this on this part of the fly, I'm not going to trim that one yet. You can either take some foam or a little piece of yarn to make a little indicator. Um, you'd be surprised at how hard these are to see sometimes. So I'm just going to take a little piece of EP trigger point in orange and I'll tie that in and just loop it back on top of itself with a little bit of room right there so that it, it sits back over that wing and I'm going to trim that short-ish just like that. And because I have to whip finish through legs and, and over the top of a big bulky head, I'm just going to use a hand whip finish. Anytime you hand whip finish, you have to make sure that you use glue. Um, in fact, with this fly, it's really critical to glue the whole head um, because a bullet head will explode the first fish you catch with it if you don't. So to trim the legs, I'll just trim them like that. I push all four legs forward and trim them roughly the same length. And then they'll sit like this, really nice at an angle. Now, to, to finish this off, I have this uh, Trout Hunter water-based head cement. And I'm just going to come in here and obviously hit the thread that I just, that I just uh, wrapped. But I'm also going to coat the whole head with this glue. And it will remain flexible, shiny, but it, will, it should help your head to not explode quite as fast. 
when you're fishing this fly, this probably isn't going to be the first drake that I throw on. Because I know I know they'll eat it if they're eating drakes, but this is more of like a maybe you have a fish that's window shopping you a little bit and you need something that's realistic. But anyway, it's also a, a very, very fun fly to tie. There you have it. It is the steak drake.